Hey everyone, welcome back to Doha, Qatar for the king and queen of the court finals. We reached the final day, finals day, with one semi-final playoff still yet to run with the third and fourth place teams from yesterday. Louis Lett with you here, one of the commentators. I'm joined by the now king of the court. I've got the queen of the court, you're the king of the court today, and you are the king in my eyes, Richie. I appreciate it. Happy to be here, Lou. We've had a great three days, haven't we? It's been amazing, yeah. It's, it's kind of... Uh crescendoed here to the final day right yesterday we saw some fast and furious unbelievable action late inning theatrics heroics and uh, some heartbreak unfortunately as well for some teams yeah i think we've, we've the first thing that we have to speak about is that one session the session where poland twice left it very late to make their way to the finals wojciak and brill we know what they're capable of, but we saw them in all of their glory at the end of round two and round three. Yeah, they reminded us that uh, as long as there's time on the clock, there's a chance in this format, right? And uh, they left it very late, as you said, and stole maybe uh, a final spot away from Sweden, who we'll have to see in the play in yeah, later this evening. Absolutely. So that starts with one 15 minute round to see who's going to be the last time, last team even to qualify for the final. The men's playoff includes Sweden. Yes, the winners from Utrecht last year, Armin and Helvig, and also a former winner in the Nook Verche Dupree and Menya Bentele. They are doing this the long way, Richie. They've played now in every single round possible for them to make the final. Yeah, they, uh, they came in a little bit late due to scheduling and hit the ground running and haven't stopped running, uh, it, it appears, right? Because every round possible they've been a part of, but they've managed to survive until the final day. So we would expect kind of nothing less than a finals appearance from them later. And actually the way that they serve and the way that they can side out, they can still win this whole competition. Yeah, their serve in particular has been very impressive. You mentioned statistically they're the best team from the challenger side as far as generating opportunities on the queen side. They've struggled a little bit to capitalize on those opportunities, but if they can write that even just a little bit, I think, this evening, they will be uh, forced to be reckoned with. And as you said, they were late arriving. I think they arrived at 2 a.m. the night before the first game. Everyone else has been here a couple of days training, so you'd think they're only going to get better and better as this competition sort of runs, and also the more reps that they get out here behind us as well. Looking at that first semi-final, we said goodbye to Japan, Akiko and Eureka, and the team that I want to look at now is a team that we didn't mention really in that first preview for very long, but we've been very impressed by Vice Beckhaus and also Brecht Piersma as well. They took a second in Niteroi in Brazil, since Sensational performance uh, on the beaches of Rio de Janeiro, but now they're doing it in the desert as well. Yeah, I was uh, unfortunately not in Brazil with you, so I didn't see them. It's It's been uh, amazing to watch them at, at such young ages, 19 and 21, I think. And uh, they play a physical game. They have great composure for such young athletes, and uh, they're certainly fun to watch. Really fun to watch. And as we said yesterday, a conveyor belt of just Dutch powerhouses in the men's and the women's form of the game. I can't wait to see how they go because this is a step up, I think, in level from Brazil. I don't know, but it's a different style of game. The service pressure is certainly higher here, and uh, I'm interested to see how that sort of plays out for them. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a reminder that living below sea level and near canals generates tremendous athleticism <laughs> from Holland. <laughs> Apparently so. Um, also, we need to uh, think about the Magnos because they're in the playoffs as well. They're a team that we've seen make the finals. They have a chance, but again, the favorites going into that playoff, I think, would be Ben Tele and the Nick Verge Dupree. Yeah, the Magnos, they play a great brand of volleyball, particularly for this format, right? Great defense, uh, creative offense. They haven't quite found the form in this tournament here in Doha that we've seen from them previously. But if you catch lightning in a bottle, that's all it takes. You got one 15 minute round to book your spot in the finals and uh, anything is possible. Absolutely. We also said goodbye to Helen Hansen and Omnenstad, a team who are very good in this format of the game. They were obviously very disappointed. Again, it's a reminder of how brutal this form of the game is when one of your best teams leave in fifth place, as we saw in the men's round with Qatar as well, but we'll come to that in just a moment. Yeah, if you catch fire at the right time, it's elation. If you have a ba bad round at the wrong time, it's, it's heartbreak, and that was kind of the story, unfortunately, for the Norwegian girls. Yep, we have the Skyters as well, who uh, they've shown that they can knuckle the ball around everywhere, which makes me weak at my knees, as you've heard. Uh, and also Kotnik and Lovsin, they took a third in the European finals in Utrecht. They're looking good, but yes, they 
maybe wasn't quite their best day in the office. Yeah, they, they certainly can be imposing. Kotnik, big at the net, great blocker, and uh, a lot of creativity behind her defensively from Kotnik. So they'll be fun to watch as well. It's, it's going to be a battle, as you would expect, with few teams remaining. Where are your dollars on? Still, still Suda and Schneider, the smiling Schneider all the time. Listen, you don't want to waffle as a gambler, right? You got to maintain some consistency. So well, you waffle um, as a commentator. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I also love waffles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'm going to stick with uh, Germany. I think, you know, they booked their spot in the finals. I don't even know that we saw their best yesterday, but they managed to get through. And that's kind of the hallmark of good, good teams is that even when they're not at their best, they can find ways to progress and to uh, win. So I, I like them going into today. Men's, we said goodbye to Novak Korotov really, really early on, and they took the golden ball from the first round. Just so many little stories that develop in these big competitions, again, showing how you can be in form in one round, but the next that you're out. And also in that first uh, semi-final, Toch Fokorots got their way through, and I think they were delighted with that because they came through the playoff to even make the semifinals, to even to make the next playoff. I think they'll take that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they were uh, a team that had some late-inning heroics as well, right? Left it till the very end to overtake Field and Friend uh, in that playoff. Yeah, That's just a couple of days ago. Very, very late. We're going to come to uh, Troy Field in just a moment. But first of all, Luini Penninger, TPLL. I think we saw their best level yesterday that we've ever seen in a king of the court, making side outs uh, galore from 12-4 down, I think, all the way up to 15 in, in that sort of final round. And they have a real chance this year. I, I don't think we've ever talked about them as, as a potential king favourite. But I think with the way that they're playing, they've certainly proved that they can knock over anyone. Yeah, they've certainly got the physicality uh, to do that. And, yeah, it's a matter of kind of finding that that top level at the right times, and they certainly did that yesterday. Absolutely. You can't go anywhere without talking about Michal Brill, Bartosz Woziak, also in that pool, and also Armin Helvig. That was um, a pool in a semifinal that was could easily be a final. Yeah, murderer's row, as it were. Absolutely. That second semifinal, Henning and Winter, they came through into that third place playoff round. They'll be delighted. We saw some great volleyball from Vinter. We're aware of what he's capable of, but what we're seeing from Paul Henning is that he's growing, having changed from being a middle blocker that we actually found out indoor, now really showing what he's capable of on the beach. Yeah, I, I think uh, <laughs> with apologies to Mr. Henning, uh, of course, the surprise that we had when we found out he was a middle blocker is actually very complimentary because he does so many ball control things so well that it almost shocks you that he doesn't have I thought years he was right and years side. yeah, of those reps <laughs> under his belt from in the indoor game, but he's certainly playing at a very high level, and we know Sven Winter has uh, been around and been a talented player for quite a few years now. Also in that playoff, we've got uh, Popoff and Big Rez. Oh, I don't know how, I don't know what to say about Popoff and Big Rez yesterday. They came in 80% at the King's End. We know that they can win this competition. But yesterday, they just couldn't make it through to the finals directly. Now they're going to have a tough task with Henning and Vinter, also with the Swedes. It's not going to be easy. And Toch Fokorod's in that playoff. Wow. I mean, it's, it's a big ask to get through to the final for them. But luckily, they got big res. Yeah, it's a, it's a tall task. Good to have the big fella on your side, of course. But uh, you would have to think the extra motivated extra incentivized Swedes are going to be on one this evening. Absolutely. Agnes Sharif, let's touch on them quickly before we, we preview the finals. <sighs> Difficult because Sheriff said to me straight after, he's like, I've only been on jumping for, for 10 days, two weeks early. He's not bothered on the outside, but maybe they'll be a little bit hurting inside that they're not playing on home sand for the, for the big gold medal today. Yeah, of course. You know, they, they just came off of uh, their off season, so not a lot of reps, maybe a little bit of rust left over on the bodies. And a, a team like Ahmed and, and Sharif become expectation-wise victims of their own success to a certain extent, right? Like we expect such great stuff from them all the time that we're shocked when it doesn't happen. But it's, it's completely understandable, albeit a little unfortunate that we don't get to see them in front of the home fans in and, the final. And you know better than anyone that you, you can't play at the top of your level every single week. True. I, um, I know that that's almost never possible. Yeah, yeah <laughs> not, not even the thing. Okay, so Brown Mewson, we know all about Brown Mewson. They have a real good chance. They went through second, but another Dutch team 
well, part Dutch team, part American team, Field and Immers, they're also winning the semi-final to make it through to the final. They were just put together yesterday, last minute, because uh, Christian Varenholz, we hope that you get better soon, carrying a couple of niggles uh, with some big tournaments on the horizon. So uh, you rest up, big fella. And, uh, well, it's given a chance, the resurrection of Troy Field, the Undertaker style in WWE. He's come back out and he's uh, really performed well with Matthew Immers. And they won the group yesterday. Could they maybe provide one of the biggest upsets of King of the Court history? Uh, I think it would qualify, yeah, if they're, if they're able to take this title. I think, yeah, I mean, even a podium finish is unexpected, right? But uh, Matthew Emmer's playing unbelievably well. He's got a lot of experience kind of, I don't, I don't want to say filling in, but certainly playing with different partners uh, as, as there's been some injuries in the Dutch program. So he's kind of jumped in and, and succeeded at every turn, I feel like, uh, and we're seeing the same thing out of him and Troy Field. Absolutely fire and ice. Troy Field giving it stacks and then uh, the, <laughs> the ice man, Matthew Immers, just uh, <laughs> keeping it level the whole way. Seems to be the perfect recipe for success. Well, there you go. There's our preview. Will it be Brower Mewson? Will it be the Swedes? They're going to have to do it the hard way through the playoffs, first of all. That's going to be the first round at 5.30. It's the women's playoffs first at 5.30. In the women's, will we see Suda Schneider get through? Remember, she's the queen from last year, Izzy Schneider. Will she go back to back here in Doha? You wouldn't put it against them either. Keep an eye out on the socials because you're going to get a lot of flavour of what's going on. The team are doing a great job. Remember, you can watch it on King of the Court TV. We're also going worldwide. You can find it on the Olympic Channel alongside a lot of other broadcasting channels as well. Richie, any more predictions? I think I had on the men's side the Polish guys taking this down, so both of my picks still alive. Yeah, I, It's all I, to play for. I would find it hard to disagree with you, but I'm going to go I'm going to go the long route. I'm going to go Nook Verger Dupree and Menya Bentele and the Swedes through the playoffs. And I think the fact that they're going to play the playoffs first is going to help them perform in the finals.